Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins, and today we're going to take a look at the readings for the Epiphany of the Lord. When we use the word epiphany, it, it really means a, a manifestation. In fact, some early church leaders called it the Feast of Manifestation. It started in the East and then moved over into the Western part of the church. When we talk about the epiphany, it may surprise you that we're talking about you. We're talking about you too. Certainly, we're talking about the manifestation of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the Magi would be visiting Jesus and, and they would be giving gifts to him of frankincense and gold and, and myrrh. But the epiphany is also about a new understanding and light being shined on, on the whole world. We get this in three readings. Isaiah chapter 60 and verses 1 through 6 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall walk by your light, and kings in the brightness of your rising. You see, Isaiah predicts a day where, where the nations shall walk by his light and his light shall shine on them. We'll find out in the New Testament that Jesus is going to set up his headquarters at the age of 30 in Capernaum, which is in typically the darkest place geographically for Israel. It is Galilee of the Gentiles, the northern portion of the Sea of Galilee, and it is there that this epiphany, this manifestation will continue. One of the main things we want to think about when we think about the epiphany is, is not only the manifestation of Jesus as the Son of God, but we also want to remember that it speaks of a point when all the nations shall see the glory of God and all the nations will have the opportunity to walk in the light of God. In the second reading in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, Paul says, Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. And then he goes on in verse 5 and he says, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body. So the epiphany certainly celebrates the manifestation of Jesus as the Son of God, but it also speaks to the fact that we now are heirs and we now can walk in the light of God. In the gospel reading in Matthew chapter 2, the Magi come and they empty their riches before the Lord. And this is exactly what Isaiah said would happen, that the nations would come and they would give gold and frankincense. In other words, their riches. We are a part of this continuation that Jesus has manifest himself to us. And now our response to the light of God is to give ourselves as gift to Jesus. And we do that by walking according to his word. Truly, this is an epiphany. Number one, that Jesus is the Son of God. But number two, the nations are being brought into the family of God, a mystery that was, that was kind of dormant for many, many years. And Paul was given stewardship over this mystery, and now he proclaims all of us can come in to the family of God. And so we should rejoice that Gentiles, the non-Jewish community, are coming in. For us, we want to rejoice. Rejoice in the epiphany and walk in the light. As Catholics, we can celebrate this week by walking in obedience to this great manifestation, this feast of manifestation.